morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Paxtonville. Welcome to our Facebook friends as well. Today is the last Sunday in the month of June, and we have a guest speaker today who's more like family. Uh, Vita's son-in-law is here today. We are glad that everyone is here, and while we go to um, personal concerns, we will um, close off the Facebook feed for a little bit. Do we have any praises today?
I will live for you alone. You're the one I seek, knowing I will find all I need in you alone. In you alone. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Who you love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. If this life I lose, I will follow you. Yeah, I will follow you. Yeah. In you there's life everlasting. In you there's freedom for my soul. In you there's joy, unending joy, and I will follow where you go, I'll go, where you stay, I'll stay, when you move, I'll move, I will follow who you love, I'll love, how you serve, I'll serve, if this life I lose, I will follow. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Who you love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. If this life I lose, I will follow you. Yeah, I will follow you. Yeah, I will follow you. Join in our call to worship. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Come gather before the Lord. Precious is the Lord to the faithful. Come offer thanks to the Lord. Praise the Lord.
Let us pray together. Justifying God, thank you for the peace you bring as we gather this day to worship you. We offer praise for your gift of grace, even when we are reluctant to receive your help. Help us rededicate ourselves to your calling to help bring in your harvest, to witness to others through our words and deeds, and to courageously live our convictions. Be present in our worship and fill our hearts with the desire to serve you. Amen. Please have a seat. Children, time to come to the steps. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Jesus holds them in his hand. Would you let me sit between the two of you, please? very much. You want to come up here and join us up top? Okay. I want you to be able to see what I have here. You're going to miss out if you're not up here. Name something you do every day. Yeah, there she comes. Every day. What do you do every day? What's something you do every single day? Um, get ready. You brush your teeth. I should hope so. Get ready for what? You say get ready. Get, get ready for, get ready for anyone you need to go. Okay, so getting up, brushing your teeth, putting on your clothes, washing your face, all that stuff. Yeah. Getting ready. Brushing your hair. Oh, brush your hair. Oh, that too. Okay, well, when I think of something that I do every day, I think of something different. And it has to do with this. Pretty heavy. You want to try it? Uh, it's pretty heavy. Tad heavy. <laughs> Tad heavy. What is it? What does it say? It's this word right here. Just study Bible. <laughs> it's a Bible. It's a life application study Bible. This is the one I'm using right now. It's been through hard times. The cover has come off and the cover's wearing out and there's lots of writing in it and some of the pages my granddaughter tore. Holly could say some of the things her dog ate on her Bible. Yeah. Liam likes the cover of Holly's Bible. But every day I read this. Do you read your Bible every day? Or do Mama and Papa read the Bible to you every day? Uh, no. no. Well, you know what? It's a really good habit to get into doing because God loves us so much, and he has so much to say. This is God's word. He has so much to say to us. So I'm going to share two ideas today that might help you read your Bible every day. I think all of you know how to read, right? Yeah. So you don't have to wait for mom or dad to read to you. So here's an idea. What does this say? Now that one's an easy word. The, the, the pi pic picture. Bible. Yeah, the picture Bible. When I opened this one, you saw lots and lots of words. Yeah. But I don't think I'll be able to read. Well, how about this one? Does this one look a little bit better? Yeah. This one's got lots and lots of pictures in it. And it tells the story, the stories of the Bible, in picture with just a little bit of reading for each picture. Oh, there's somebody in the fire. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Oh, that would be an exciting story to read. Yeah, it, looks like a comic to me. it does look like a comic book. You are exactly right. Why do I feel like 
Well, somebody had the idea that it would help children read their Bible if it came looking like a comic book. So for young kids to get into the Bible stories, maybe you want to tell your mama and papa about the picture Bible. This one belonged to my son. Now I know today you prefer this kind of stuff. Yes, yes I thought so. Well, I want you to know that, they, see the picture of the Bible on there? Can you find the picture of the Bible on there? Do you see it? Right there it says, Holy Bible. And who does that kind of remind you of? God. Yeah, it's supposed to look like Jesus. And underneath it, in tiny white print, it says, Bible for kids. You know, you know about apps, don't you? Well, there's an app called YouVersion that you can put on, on your phone. And I use it sometimes instead of my big heavy Bible. And it gives you a Bible verse of the day. Whoops. Matthew today. Desire first and foremost God's kingdom and God's righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. But I can also go down here and read a particular plan. Right now I'm doing deeper into scripture Romans, and it gives me the scripture passage from Romans that I want to read. So I can read on here as well, but I want to show you the one for kids, the one that you could get, have mama and papa put on a tablet or their phone, or your phone if you happen to have one. It gives you, oh, there it comes. It gives you choices. Each one of these is a story from the Bible that you could read. We've been studying what in Smash lately? What were we studying in Smash lately? What were you studying in Smash lately? I haven't, I didn't, I didn't join it today, so I don't know. But it's the same for the last two months. Hmm, its initials are HS. Sometimes it appears as a fire. Sometimes as a wind. God's wonderful gift. The Holy Spirit comes. You've been studying the Holy Spirit. You can get the story and it will read it to you, Ace. Jews from all over the world were in Jerusalem. And there's the words, and there's the picture. We can't do this whole thing, but it will read it to you. Uh oh, there was the wind. Oh, and there's the fire. Yeah. So you can go through and you can, can do that. At the end of the story, it will give you three questions to answer to see if you can get a reward. And it gives you an activity to do. In this, one, you can color the story. Yes, let's continue where I left off. I started to, to color the story. What color would you like to use, young lady? Got teal. Well, hit the teal. Now hit something in the picture. Just tap on something in the picture. There it goes. How about you? What color would you like? We've got all kinds of colors. Purples and blues and greens and reds. And orange. You want orange. Okay. What do you want to color orange? Another pole. What about you, Julia? What do you want to color? What color would you like? Uh. We've got browns and grays and blacks and whites. Whoops. What did I go past? <coughs> you want black. What are you going to color black? Oh, wait, that's black. That's black. Oh, then. Then just untap it. Okay, go on to something else. Okay, and what would you like to color that color? Okay, her shirt. <laughs> so you can do things just like you like to do on different apps, on tablets and phones. You can do that with the Bible and spend time with God. And you know, he gave us his son to die for our sins. 
So it's a really good idea for us to spend some time with him, to show him that we love him. So two easy ways to do that as a child would be a picture Bible or an app on a tablet or phone. Yes. Let's pray. Help me, please. Thank you, God, for your word collected together in the Bible. Help me think about spending time with you in the Bible. Amen. Thanks for coming out. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for reminding us that there, there are many ways to read your word. There are many, many new ways to experience your word in our lives. Help us to take advantage of them, Lord, and help us to listen and understand and take to heart the message that is being brought today. In Jesus' name, amen. The Old Testament scripture is from Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 6 through 11. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return to the Lord and he will have compassion on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways, nor, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there without watering the earth and making it bare and sprout and furnishing seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so will my word be which goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. The... Uh, Second reading is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verses 12. For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit, of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Mary. Our message today is going to be shared by Cliff Bourne. We all know him as a member of Vita's family. Today he's coming to us with a different intent as his major purpose. He's going to be speaking as a Gideon and talking about God's word. Let's welcome Cliff. Thank you, Pam. Let me get all my props together here. <clears throat> well, it is good to be here with you all. And um, one day, a couple of years ago, I was uh, out on Penn State's campus there at the corner of College Avenue and uh, Allen Street across from the corner room. So some of you who are familiar with State College know where that is. And we were uh, there's some Gideons there, we were doing a Bible distribution, and I was holding out a copy of one of these little testaments to a young man who was uh, in an obvious hurry and scurrying across the intersection there, and I hoped he would just grab this as he, as he went by, he was in an obvious hurry. And uh, as I handed it out, to my surprise, he stopped, and he looked me in the eye, and he said, you guys gave me one of these on this very spot a year ago. I had never read the Bible. I read this and I gave my life to Jesus Christ and 
I'm in a hurry because I'm late for Bible study. <laughs> um, Hebrews 4.12 that we just read reminds us that the Word of God indeed is living and active, that it's sharper than any two-edged sword, that it pierces the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow, and it's able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Well, it, it's a real privilege for me to be here uh, with you all uh, today. And uh, as Pam said, this is kind of like a second home church for us. In fact, um, it was, uh, th this church really does have a special place in my heart uh, because 39 and a half years ago yesterday uh, with uh, Paul Connor here, um, or not Paul Connor, Paul Crawford, sorry, <laughs> um, uh, we were married uh, in this church. And uh, so it holds a very special place. And in fact, I wore this tie for this special occasion because this is the tie that I wore when we were married. <laughs> and, and the exciting thing about this tie is that it still fits. <laughs> I think it's about the only thing that still fits. <laughs> but it still fits. So uh, it is my privilege to be able to give you an update and share about the Gideons, uh, some of the things that we've been doing. Uh, some of the things that motivate us and encourage us to uh, indeed uh, share the Word of God with others. Uh, Hebrews 4.12, the passage that we looked at, uh, is one that reminds us that the Word of God is living and active. The word living there is the word from which we get zoology. Literally, it means breathing. Uh, one dictionary said that it, it's something that's not dead, okay? but it's breathing. Uh, it has life. And so the Word of God is living, it has life. And, and the word active uh, in the New Testament there is the word from which we get our word energy. Uh, the Word of God has living energy. It is able to produce life in a person. It is able to change a person's life and give them um, the uh, ability to become part of God's family and to change uh, more into more, more and more into Christ's likeness, and this has been a motivating uh, influence in the uh, in the Gideon's ministry, knowing that the Word of God has the power to change the life of people. Um, uh, there's a story, and and we have thousands of stories uh, that we get from. Uh, people who have been to hotels over a hundred years ago, we began distributing Bibles in hotels. And uh, there are just thousands of testimonies of people that have been changed as a result of having access to a Bible at a particular point in their lives. There was a young teenage girl who uh, uh, her family were all atheists. And uh, they would travel around a good bit. Uh, they had kind of a business that they would travel around with. And one day she happened to be alone in her hotel room for a short period of time when she was about 12 years old. And so she was kind of inquisitive and looking around the room and she found a Bible that had been placed there by a Gideon. And as, she, uh, as, as you would want to do normally when you pick up a book, you open it to the beginning. And she began in Genesis 1 and began reading and she thought, hmm, there's some pretty weird stuff in here. Uh, and so she decided she wanted to continue reading to see what was in this book. And so she was able to kind of scuttle it into her uh, suitcase without her parents knowing. And over the years, uh, she would sit in her bedroom under her covers with the flashlight at night, and she was reading through the Bible. And after a few years, by the time she had graduated from high school, she had read all the way through the Bible and had given her life to Christ. And she grew in her college years and her Christian life. And and ultimately, after a few years, she was able to lead uh, almost all of her family members to Christ over that time. So from a family of atheists, they uh, became a family of believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. A man named Bernie Dimet uh, was an Australian. He was a very successful businessman, but um, realized the emptiness of success. And uh, one day he was at a conference uh, for an extended time. Uh, at a particular hotel, he was up on the eighth floor, and each evening he would go out on the balcony of his eighth floor room and, and decide, you know what, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to jump over this thing. Life is just not worth it. And each evening he would also be drawn to the Bible that was in his room uh, that had been placed there by a Gideon. And after a few nights, he had decided he was going to do it. He was going to jump. And uh, that evening, though, before he did that, he opened his Bible and began to read some of the promises that God had given in his word. 
And so he decided not to jump and a few weeks later gave his life to Jesus Christ. And he became the CEO of a uh, group called Christianity Works. It's a worldwide radio ministry kind of similar to the Moody Broadcasting um, Network uh, out of Australia. And so internationally, the Gideons have distributed over 2.3 billion copies of the scriptures around the world since its inception in uh, 1908. The current rate of distribution is about 235,000 copies a day. Uh, so it's a tremendous number, and, and it is exciting to see how God has allowed us to do that. We have 95 printed languages that we can distribute scriptures in, and we also have a Bible app. <laughs> I don't know, you know, I forgot to look. Uh, where's my Gideon guys here? Uh, I forgot to look for the app cards. You guys have app cards back there? Uh, if you don't, we ought to get some. Uh, but this has uh, the Bible app that the Gideons <clears throat> have produced. It has uh, portions of the scriptures and the whole scriptures in, near, in about 1,200 languages that you can access. So like in an area like Penn State, it's a great thing for us to have because we have a lot of internationals and we can actually access the scriptures in various languages there. Uh, so it's great. The Gideons here in Snyder County are certainly involved in distributing Bibles and in the hotels and in doctor's offices and wherever they can, uh, high schools. Um, uh, it's more difficult than ever to be able to get into high schools these days. And the Gideons have produced a uh, thing they call the Life Book. The Life Book is a great tool that uh, high schoolers can use to carry into their schools and share with their friends. And it's a study in the Gospel of John. And uh, there are just some great testimonies of how students have been able to use these uh, in their school uh, to share Christ with their friends and lead friends to Christ. So uh, it's a great opportunity that, that, uh, that they have. The hotel Bibles, um, uh, surprisingly, this was, a, this was a statistic that was really surprising to me. The Gideons are pretty well known for distributing Bibles uh, in hotels. But the hotel distribution is only about 2% of the total distribution that the Gideons are doing today. Uh, most of the distribution is through Bibles in prisons, and also we hand out these testaments uh, all over the world. Um, and, uh, and so that 235,000 number that you heard, most of that are these testaments that we're able to hand out in various kinds of uh, activities. Um, uh, what we call scripture blitzes in cities and universities and that kind of thing. And uh, these are also a great witnessing tool, a uh, great opportunity just to give personal testimony to somebody, to hand it to somebody as a gift uh, and say, here's a gift that I have for you. Maybe a receptionist uh, somewhere or at a doctor's office or perhaps uh, in a store where you're uh, doing business, uh, just a great opportunity for some personal testimony. And so we see that the Word of God is living and active. It's a motivating factor for us as Gideons to recognize that the Word of God that we pass out has the, has the potential, the power to be able to change a person's life, to help them to see how they can come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and how they can have a personal relationship with God. Well, the second passage uh, I asked to have read this morning was the one from Isaiah. And the passage from Isaiah is a great invitation. In Isaiah chapter 53, we have the, uh, the account that God gives through the prophet Isaiah of the suffering servant. Uh, this is the chapter where we see all of us like sheep have gone astray, but the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. And it's a description of the suffering that our Savior went through uh, when he went to the cross. But Isaiah 55, a couple of chapters later, is the great invitation that God gives as a result of the, the work of the suffering servant providing for us the opportunity for salvation. And it's a great invitation. In verse 1, it begins with uh, the passage to come to the Lord. Come, and uh, I was going to open my Bible to this, and I forgot to do it. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you, have, you who have no money, come, buy and eat, come, buy wine and milk without money 
and without cost. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourself in abundance. And then going down to verse 6, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And what a, what a great passage in terms of invitation uh, that God gives to come to a saving knowledge uh, of himself because of the work of the suffering servant that, with it, that he just described a couple of uh, chapters earlier. But this passage ends with this great promise that says, for as the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return there without watering the earth and making it bare and sprout and furnishing seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be which goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. What a great uh, motivational promise to be able to share the Word of God, to share that invitation to come to the Lord. And uh, as we share the Scriptures with others, we have the privilege of inviting them to come to seek the Lord while He may be found. Excuse me. And this is a great motivation to us as, uh, as Gideon's as well. Uh, Mary Kay Beard, uh, some of you may recognize that name, but if you don't, uh, Mary Kay Beard was uh, on the FBI's 10 most wanted list as a young, t- uh, not a, an older teenager, I should say. She ran away from home. She married a guy that she only knew for a couple of weeks to find out that he was um, a thief. He was a bank robber. And uh, of course, to support her uh, new husband, she became one of the most skilled safe crackers in the country. Uh, and uh, was on the FBI's 10 most wanted list. Uh, She says in her testimony, she wasn't captured by grace, she was captured by the FBI. And she ended up going to prison. But while she was in prison, she found a Gideon New Testament in her cell. And that encouraged her to attend a Bible study that was being led by some of the ladies from from the Gideon Ladies Auxiliary. And she came to a saving knowledge of Christ and Uh, And after that, she began to be concerned about many of the women prisoners who just had real concern for children that they had. And she ended up beginning with many, uh, I think many are familiar with, the Angel Tree Ministry. And uh, God graciously gave her an opportunity to be uh, paroled early uh, and uh, and to be able to um, develop that ministry and share with others the love of Jesus Christ. There's a, a young man who sat, uh, I guess, laid in his hospital bed, I should say, who was um, uh, having a difficult time. He had tried to commit suicide but failed. And uh, his mother was given a Bible in the hospital that was uh, 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 put there by a Gideon. And, and uh, as she, um, uh, she was encouraged to read from John chapter 14 to this young man, her young son, and as she did, this young son decided that he wanted to know more about Christ. And over uh, the time he was in the hospital, he gave his life to Jesus Christ. And we all know the name of Rabbi Zacharias as someone who is a great testimony uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ today. <clears throat> and so uh, there are great opportunities. There are great ways that God's word does not return to him void. And this is where the Gideons, we see ourselves in his extension to the local church family because uh, we have Gideons in over 200 countries and provinces around the world. And there are places where there are Gideons where missionaries cannot go. And so, um, but we really depend as part, uh, as kind of an arm of the local church, we really depend on the support of local churches around the country and around the world. And there are a couple of ways that uh, churches are able to support us, uh, support the Gideons. First of all, uh, with prayer. Prayer is essential to the success of the ministry as the Word of God is distributed. Prayer is what uh, moves God to make effective the use of His Word. And, you know, there are multiple multitudes of people that will never come to church, that will never hear the gospel, but they will see a Gideon Bible in a hotel or a hospital room or a prison, and they will be able to hear uh, the, the wonderful story of the love of Christ for them. Perhaps just handing out a Bible on the street corner somewhere. Um, so your daily prayers for the Gideon ministry are, are very important to us. But how do you know what to pray for? 
Well, in the last couple of years, the Gideons have developed a website called the friendsofgideons.org. It's all one word. It's like German. You know how the Germans always try to put all the words together at the end of a sentence. And, uh, but it's all one thing, friendsofgideons.org. And there you can get access to camp prayer calendars, to uh, reports of scripture blitzes from countries around the world. Uh, you can hear stories about... Um, a testimonies of people who have come to Christ through those blitzes. Uh, it's a great uh, opportunity for you to pray knowledgeably about the Gideon ministry and to rejoice in the things that God is doing around the world through that. We recently, I, I heard a report from uh, the fellow who's a, the leader of the Gideon ministry in Venezuela, which is a very troubled location right now. About a year ago, the Gideons were approached by the Venezuelan government to hand out uh, testaments to in every prison and in every high school in Venezuela at least once a year. I don't know the status of that right now because the turmoil in that country is tremendous, but there is a great opportunity there to share the Word of God in a very troubled land. Um, and so prayer is very important. But your support financially is also uh, very important. Purchasing Bibles uh, is, uh, is very important. And for a uh, testament like this, cost about a dollar and a quarter. Uh, I gave away my uh, whole Bible uh, last time I spoke, and I forgot to get another one. So imagine I'm waving a whole Bible in front of you. They cost about $5 to print and distribute. And so uh, the money that uh, people give toward uh, the purchase of Bibles, 100% of that goes to the printing and the shipping of those Bibles to the location where they're going to be used. Uh, all the other administrative costs are paid by Gideons themselves through their dues. So there are no administrative overheads that are taken out of gifts that you give uh, from local churches. And so uh, there's a number of ways that you can do that. Uh, there's an offering plate in the back, I guess, as you leave. You can uh, give a gift that will be uh, passed on to the Gideons locally here in Snyder County. Uh, you can also use the card program. Um, you know, I, I forgot to look. Do you guys have, uh, Dennis, where's Dennis? Do you guys have a, a card yes, we do. rack? You do? Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, in these cards, you can uh, give uh, Bibles to the Gideons uh, through uh, in memory of someone or in, in honor of a special occasion. Uh, there would be an envelope in there if I had mine uh, in here where you, that you can send to the Gideons, and then there'll be an envelope for this card that you can send to the person that you are honoring uh, through that. So that's another way you can do that. Uh, you can give online through the friendsofgideons.org that I had mentioned earlier. And so there are a number of ways that you can do that. A man named uh, Elliot Osowit gave a testimony. He grew up in a Jewish family where the name of Jesus was forbidden uh, to be spoken. Uh, but as he grew up, he got married. He, he went through some very difficult circumstances in life, became a drug addict, ruined his family. His daughters were in and out of prison uh, as uh, late teenagers. And uh, he began to realize that he had ruined his family. His wife kicked him out of the house on Christmas Eve. And uh, he went to a local hotel in North Carolina, uh, not knowing what to do, thinking he would probably end his life. He took a gun with him to do that. Uh, but as he uh, got into the hotel room where he was, there was a Gideon Bible open on top of the television when televisions were big enough to do that. And, uh, and, and he saw this open Bible there and he didn't want to have anything to do with it. He threw it off the, the TV and it landed on the floor and he tried to kick it under the bed, but it was one of those hotels that had the box thing under the bed and you couldn't kick anything under the bed. And so he picked up the Bible and his eyes laid on to John chapter 14, verse 27. My peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, not as the world gives. And he realized that he needed that peace in his life. He called the pastor that he had kicked out of his house several times uh, on, uh, at midnight on Christmas Eve. And that pastor came out and led him to Jesus Christ. And he said this in his testimony, somebody gave the $5 so some Gideon could put that Bible in that room so on that night I could read about the peace that Jesus Christ could give me. Somebody gave that $5. Somebody gave, uh, in, in the case of the uh, testament I handed out to a Penn State student, somebody gave the dollar and a quarter for that. And when we get to heaven, 
this fellow will find out who it was who gave that five bucks for, uh, for the testament that he got. Where did these end up? Some of them end up in the trash. Penn State janitors tell us they pick them out of the trash and they hand them out later, <laughs> uh, which is uh, encouraging to hear. Some people find them on the road while they're out jogging before it's daylight uh, on a rainy morning and they pick up a Bible that had been laying there on the road and they dry it out and read it and come to a saving knowledge of Christ. Uh, a prisoner finds one in a trash can and begins to read it. And uh, a guy who was a drug dealer became a pastor after he gave his life to Christ. There's a man named Eriberto in the Philippines who was given one of these testaments. And he read it, and he came to Christ, and he started a church. And he had five sons and two daughters, and all five sons came to Christ. And, and his two daughters, and the five sons became pastors. The two daughters married pastors. There were 15 grandsons who all became pastors. And in the Philippines, there were over 600 churches that were planted because one Gideon New Testament was handed to uh, a man when he had a need. And so uh, the power of the Word of God is just amazing. So we need your prayers. We need your uh, financial support as well. And we also need your participation. Uh, there is uh, certainly opportunity. The Gideons have about 135,000 members. And the Gideon Auxiliary, the ladies, there's almost that number. Uh, but there's room for more. The goal that we have for fiscal 2020 is to uh, uh, expand our distribution rate to um, uh, we're 275,000 copies a day. And we need more hands to do that. And, uh, and we will look forward to God's provision in doing that. So I would encourage you today, as uh, if, if there are any men here who are professional men or businessmen, if you would have an interest in participating with the Gideons, I would encourage you to do that. It is a great opportunity for fellowship, encouragement, but mostly uh, for that opportunity to give the invitation that God gives us to come back to the Lord, uh, to seek Him while He may be found. So thank you for this opportunity, and uh, God bless you all, and it is a joy to be able to be with you all here today. Thank you. Thank you, Cliff. We thank Cliff for reminding us of how precious God's holy word really is. Let us join together in prayer. Good morning, Lord. We are happy to be here in your house, in your presence, among others who love you like you love us. We thank you for the praises that we heard this morning for the gift of beautiful weather for a family reunion, for the gift of health for, I think, a 93-year-old, and the birthday of a 90-year-old, and the birthday of a 99-year-old. Ladies who love you, Lord, we thank you for their example. We thank you for the beauty of the promise that you gave when you sent the first rainbow into the sky. We thank you for the loving gift of Jesus and his saving grace for us and his mercy. And we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit The Spirit lives inside of us and we are so grateful for the power that is there. We thank you for the organization of the Gideons and the work that they do in the world. We lift up our daily needs before you for we know that you've said we're taken care of. We should not worry. Give comfort for those who are in times of struggle, to Jean with congestive heart failure, 
for his wife healing from knee replacement. For Penny's daughter's friends who need, friend who needs a kidney. For all those unspoken struggles that are going on in our lives and in our families' lives. We thank you for the comfort and the protection and the provision that you provide. You are an awesome and loving God, worthy of all of our praise. In your most holy name we pray, amen. Join together in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we move into the time of dedication and offering, and the ushers can please get ready as I share just a smidge with you before offering time. Our offertory today will be provided by Josh and Abby Bourne in honor of their grandmother, Vida. So we are grateful for their music today. And please come forward as we say a blessing on our offering. Holy Spirit, bless us. We thank you for your generosity to us. And so in return, we give you the best from all that you have given us. Amen. Jesus. 
Thank you very much, Abby and Josh. Our closing hymn today is number 571, Go Make of All Disciples. Time spent with or giving up to God is a comfort and a blessing. If you want to give a few minutes to him, there are prayer warriors available to pray with you or for you as you pray. And so, as Jesus said, go make disciples. That is your task this week. Or, as I told the children, your task this week is to read your Bible every day.